I feel Welcome, so fancy everybody. being here today. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to a Saturday edition of Collider Mailbag. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch or to listen to us. I am your host, John Roca, joined this week by one of my favorite people on the planet, one of my favorite people to meet in this sphere over the last few years. That's the awesome, wonderful, and talented Nikki Novak. How are you? Does he say that to everybody? No. I just want to know. No. For you, I always save the best I'm introductions glad for you. I'm here on Saturday, Saturday, <laughs> It's all Saturday. right. It's all right for fighting. We're going to try not Should to have fight. cast me in Rocket Man, clearly. Oh yeah, yeah. you're a great singer, that's for sure. <laughs> How have I'm you been? Words. Have you been? I've been really, really good. Yeah. It was I kind of like, you know, award season was insane. Oh right, of course. And amazing. Yeah. It was my first year in the BFCA, so I got to feel fancy. Oh nice. And um, after the Oscars, I said to myself, like, I cannot wait for the Oscars to be over so mm -hmm. I can have a you know, some time off or a little bit of downtime. Right. And after day two, I was like, what is my life? What am I doing? <laughs> I have no life. I have no career. I'm never going to work again. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we can help. And I'm glad you could take the Therapy. time to come in. <laughs> well, she's excited. I know I'm, I'm excited. We're going to answer questions from you, the fans, the, the Collider fans. Thank you all so much for sending the incredible questions that you send in. You know, this week I had two, like, I took 25 <laughs> questions out. There were so many great questions. There were a lot of good questions. There were. Yeah. And I had the you know, I had to send them on to Nikki to see what five she liked, send them on and see. And so those five made our cut here. So we're going to break them all down and answer them for you. You guys know when you when we put the call out for questions, you can send them out on our social media there on Twitter and on Instagram. When you see the call, you see the posting, put that hashtag Collider Mailbag makes it easy to find. Or you can email us, mailbag at collider.com. Maybe you don't like social media, nothing wrong with that. And you want to just email us, you, you can there, mailbag at collider.com. All right, let's get into it. Our first question is an email from Damon Ward who writes, What's up, Collider? During the Live Aid performance in Bohemian Rhapsody, I got the most chills ever from watching a movie scene. Can you recall some scenes or moments in movies that gave you the chills? Thanks for answering. Stay sweaty! Uh, Nikki, what? Love that ending. Well, yeah, no, I mean, you know, I, I agree, Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. I want to you know what I want to know. I want to know the percentage of people that went and YouTubed Live Aid after watching oh, the movie oh, yeah. versus who didn't. Like, mm -hmm. is there anybody on the planet who didn't go back and watch the real <laughs> Live Aid performance after watching that movie? I did after I watched the trailer. I Did went back really? and rewatched because I watched it live. I'm old enough to have watched it live yeah. when it was being shown yeah. that day. So to go back and watch it again on YouTube, because the whole thing's on YouTube, I remember watching it over breakfast after watching the trailer because yeah. it was so incredible. Well, I watched it with my family over the holidays. Mm -hmm. I'd seen it already, but I wanted to show my family. And my family, you know, we're from small town. Mm. They barely know who Queen is. Trust, it's a whole thing. <laughs> but I did not come from a movie family. But afterwards i showed it to them and but yeah. i showed them the one on youtube that's a side by side oh, right, yeah. which is it's 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 extraordinary but to, yeah. to answer the question i have like i literally have chicken scratch i have like it's like the manifesto <laughs> of a serial killer if you can see the way i write but <laughs> i have like 10 here but there oh, was 10? one right. there was i'm only going to do a couple but okay. one of the most chill inducing moments for me and it didn't happen so much the first time watching the film mm -hmm. but i was on a plane about a year ago and watched this movie and I watched this scene and all of a sudden it was like tears didn't just come down, they like shot out of my oh, eyes. Wow. And it was, you can't handle the truth. It was wow. that scene, it was the Jack Nicholson. In A Few Good Men. In A Few Good Men. Mm -hmm. There was, and here's what it is, like I think we're in this world now where there's so many superhero movies and, but the raw emotion that came out of that film between the two of them, where you just mm. have two people going toe to toe like that, and they were so locked into each other. You know how much I love Tom Cruise you do. to begin with, and I love Jack Nicholson. But watching that back, it just floored me. I couldn't believe, and I wasn't crying because it was sad, I was mm. just emotional watching yeah. it. It just brought out like everything, whether it was aggression or what, whatever it was, it was just like, I just found myself crying. Yeah, okay. So that was one of them. Okay, what's your second one? Lion. Oh, the film Lion, the Dev Patel film, the Dev Patel film okay. At, towards the end. I really got that was another one that after watching the film, mm -hmm. I Googled the story and I learned everything I could about the real life story. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of similar to like Bohemian Rhapsody when you when something is based on a true story. This scene at the end when he finally sees his mother and oh, then yeah. after the, you know, in the, the credits roll, when mm -hmm. you see him, the actual footage of the person with his real life mom. Right. And it was one of, Lion was one of my favorite films in the last 10 years. I mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. It's fantastic. Um, Agreed. So yeah, those were a few. All right. Well, yeah. So do you tell me yours? Okay. Well, I would say um, as far as rock uh, biopic inducing chills, um, The Doors 
uh, when uh, not to touch the earth. That whole sequence when it starts is so chills inducing for me because I'm a massive Doors fan. But to see it, it's almost like you got a chance to go and see them live. If you never had a chance to see them live, Oliver Stone got it as close to that experience as possible with everything happening and the dancing and the Native American chants in the middle of it and Morrison doing all these things. Incredibly chill inducing. Uh, the other one that I would throw in, or maybe the other two, is at the end of Color Purple, when mm. Whoopi Goldberg is reunited with her sister, spoiler alert, um, the every time, every time, just Waterworks. tears. Waterworks, because they go back to being little girls again and doing the thing they did as sisters to reconnect. Yeah. And when her son comes up and goes, Mama, I just lose it every <laughs> that was very time. Good. Thank you. I just lose it every time. Really it's good. such a beautiful moment. And I think the last thing I would say is, because uh, I'm a huge Rocky fan, when uh. Adrian in Rocky 2 comes out of her coma and says, I want you to do one thing for me. What's that? Come closer. Come here. And she goes, what? Win. And when she wow. says win, wow. and even now, just re just saying it to you right now, Nikki, I got chills from my legs all the way up to my top of my head because who doesn't want someone who absolutely loves them so much to support them as they fight for what they want yeah. in the world? And it's it such a beautiful moment between that couple, you know, and that a, that relationship isn't talked about enough as one of the great romances in film. Uh, oh, Adrian 1, and Rocky. No, I th and I 1000%. I got to go back and watch it now. I haven't seen it in, in so long. Oh, yeah. I have to mention two really quick. Okay. Jurassic Park, the first time you saw Jurassic Park and oh. you saw all the dinosaurs. Yeah. That's that's kind of an obvious one, but Back to the Future, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh. When, when he gets, hit, towards the end, yeah. when he sends him back and you see him go. Oh yeah. You know, and there's the lightning and the whole thing. That to me, like I love Michael J. Fox. Mm -hmm. I love, I, and I love that film. And that was, that's one of those classic movies. To me, it's a perfect film. Oh yeah. That's a, I think that's yeah. a fair, I think a lot of people would agree with you yeah. out there. All right, what's our second question? Oh my gosh. Oh, do you have it up? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. okay, second question. Yeah. Nick Bedeau writes, hey, Collider fam, if Spielberg insists on requiring the preservation of the cinematic experience for Oscar nomination, then isn't it only logical to also require that the Academy voters go see the films in a theater in order to vote? So shouldn't he be demanding an end to DVDs as well? It seems, for your consideration, DVDs mm -hmm. as well, seems silly to me to demand a cinematic experience of the films if the Academy ignores it when it comes down to the actual voting. Thanks, Nick B. You know, Such I, a good question. It's a great question. <laughs> and, and you know, this Spielberg thing, I included it again for a second week because I think there's a lot of legs to this story and tentacles to this story. Yes. And this is one of them. Absolutely. If you're going to put the onus on these filmmakers to have to find theatrical distribution for their films through the studios, then I think you have to put the onus on the voters to make that extra effort to go see right. this thing in the theaters. Because if you can't, then you can't vote. In fact, you should vote, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm being a bit crazy, but maybe you should vote at the theater right after you're done seeing all the films, then submit your vote or something like that. But I think you should be mandated to go to a screen and you can't vote unless you go see the screening. And yes, if things happen, emergencies, whatever, oh well, you're not allowed to vote for this particular thing. I think that's fair. Uh, and and multiple fair. There are you and I both know, Nikki. There are multiple screenings of, of those Oscar-nominated yeah, films that occur in this town. But I'm going to play devil's town. advocate okay. because being, like I said, I was I was a first-year member of the BFCA. Like mm -hmm. I got truck. I'm, I'm telling you, my UPS guy couldn't even lift <laughs> the bags of screeners that were coming to the house. Right. You truly don't have time to watch all of them, and it's not being obnoxious saying that mm -hmm. because there are just that many of them and that many things to consider. And like right. perfect example, I just watched Capernaum for the first time. Oh, okay. Ca Ca Capernaum, Capernaum. I know mm -hmm. I've heard it pronounced a couple of ways, mm -hmm. but I admittedly didn't watch it. It was a foreign language film, and it, it right. was you know it won the big prize at um, Cannes, and mm -hmm. and I didn't watch it when I voted before I voted, and I wish I had because I would have voted it. It, it is an extraordinary film, right. and I'm sad that I didn't get a chance to watch it. And I bet a lot of people and I did talk to a couple people mm. after who are critics who are members as well and they said oh I didn't watch it either right. and it, that's the shame of it so you know it's the t even having the time to go to a screening it's difficult yeah. but it's also it also plays into the other tentacle of what you're talking about and that is does something need to be experienced on the big screen mm -hmm. and right but you know but here's what I'll say about that like Roma first time I saw Roma was in the theater okay and you know, as I know, sometimes your mood, the temperature in the place, your seat, <laughs> all of that, which is why people like watching things at home because they can get comfy, they can get their food right. and whatever. But 
you know, I didn't enjoy Roma the first time because I was so exhausted. I was so uncomfortable. I, mm. I had I had to make it to a screening. So this could be the same thing as these voters. Right. You're gr I was grumpy. It was the end of the long day. It was the only screener. And I it really affected how I felt about it. And then it was like, OK, it's going to be two and a half hours. And then I watched it again at home mm. and I had a totally different experience. And even though it's meant to play on a big screen, that right. film is. I enjoyed it a lot more the second time. Well, and for the record, I am not a fan of what Spielberg said. I like the idea that streaming films can be uh, up for consideration. You know, recently Triple Frontier dropped and a lot of critics enjoyed it, but they also said it felt a little bit like a TV movie. Okay, right. that's what Spielberg means. But when you watch Roma, that does not have a TV movie feel not to at it all. at all. So you can disseminate, even within the streaming services, yeah. what should be in consideration for Oscars and what yeah. shouldn't. So this idea of what Nick is mentioning here, yes, I agree. If, if you're going to go the Spielberg route, then you better make sure everybody goes to the theater to experience it. Because if the films have to screen in the theater, mm -hmm. then voters should have to go to the theater to see it. Because if you're going to force them to do that, you got to force the voters to do that as well, in my opinion. Opinions. That's why I think it's a ridiculous thing Spielberg said, and I think it's against progress rather than going. I with guess progress. the question for me is like, let's say it, it, you know, we accept that it's any streaming film can be accepted. Mm -hmm. Do you think over time films will change in that they don't need to necessarily be experienced on the big screen? And it, do you think it'll mm -hmm. change sort of the quality of films in any way? It's a good question. I, I think it matters on the filmmaker. Does the filmmaker yeah. have a theatrical right. point of view or does the filmmaker have a lesser theatrical point of view to approach it? And do they understand the medium that they are working in to try to bring out the best? Because you right. want to kind of have your films be successful. It's not that you seek money, it's you seek success because sex sex me sorry success did means you, you keep say, working yeah you did didn't you? i did double sex sorry about this <laughs> success means you keep working and that's what's important here in this yeah. in this uh, industry but you make a good point here will it affect the quality going forward i think it all depends on what kind of film is being made and also netflix sometimes buys these films already made and then just right, distributes right. them and, on and their that's something platform. that he mentioned too yeah. is it, it you know there are certain ones that were always meant to be a netflix film and certain ones right. that are acquired later and then that that's two more tentacles that mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's a lot of change. Yeah. Yeah. We'll move on to our next question. Okay. It's an Instagram question from RSF underscore Graham. He asks, is there an obscure actor slash actress you'd like to see in a future MCU film? Paul Rudd wasn't an obvious choice for Ant-Man. So my call is Jason Bateman as Mr. Fantastic. Uh, Nikki, what do you got? Oh my God. No, don't steal. Don't steal my answers, Nikki. I know I only see, oh no, now I see. <laughs> I, was, I was reading the, I was actually reading the question. <laughs> this is one. I'm I, hiding my answers right This now. is okay. one. I saw this question last night and I've spent so much time oh. thinking about it and I'm trying to like narrow it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I like, I like the Jason Bateman route. It really depends if they go older or younger right, with those course. two characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about Michael C. Hall? for Mr. Mr. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, it's an interesting choice. I loved him in Dexter, yeah. and I like I like that sort of side of him where he's not Mr. Personality, mm -hmm. where he's a little bit more pulled back, and I think that's, I don't know this the comic book universe as well as you do, but mm. I think there is that, you know, rendition of him where he's, he's not the John Krasinski that people are talking. You know, people right, are mentioning right. his name, but I'd like him to be a little bit darker. That's a fair point. I, I, he's, to me, in my opinion, uh, Reed is like a six foot two tall guy, hence why he's a lot, you know, uh, plastic man. All, I mean, not plastic man, but why he's like, you know, uh, can stretch and everything like that. Yeah. And when you see Michael C. Hall, Michael C. Hall is a little bit shorter than yeah. that. So it would be weird to see him, I think, as Mr. Fantastic, but depends on how you round out the cast. It right. could be an interesting way to go. And certainly on Dexter and on uh, Six Feet Under, he has shown incredible the range, uh, range yeah. as an actor and yeah. in multiple other projects as well. So it's not a bad uh, and choice. Sometimes I just, I I just like somebody that's not been, not that I'm against John Krasinski's name being thrown in mm. there, but I'm just, sometimes I like when Marvel has plucked people out of, yeah. you know, that haven't worked in a while or haven't been, you know, so in the limelight. So then you're not associating the character with their celebrity so right. much. That's a good point. Yeah. So that Who was one of got? mine. Oh my gosh. So Star Fox was another one. Oh, nice. And I think the obvious choice for me would be Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> I mean, obvious in how many ways? In, yeah. in a thousand different ways, but yeah, I think you know. First of all, he he has shown incredible range, yeah. but we also we know he can play a douchebag <laughs> like better than anybody. You see, oh, big Little Lies and yeah, Big yeah. Little Lies, and he has that you know physical presence. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's that. That was another choice. 
Um, I want you to go to your. Okay, all right. Um, my two or my three I had were uh, Moon Knight, Spider Woman, and Namor the Submariner. Uh, I love Anson Mount for Moon Knight. He has been. I didn't watch Hell on Wheels on AMC. It was one of those Western shows that didn't really grab me in the first couple episodes, so I didn't keep watching it as opposed to Godless, which is incredible. Um, but Anson Mount this season on Star Trek Discovery has been incredible, and I had no idea that I could see such an such a new way to see Captain Pike uh, from the Star Trek universe like Anson Mount portrays him. So this idea of him stepping into Moon Knight, who is a conflicted guy with a lot of different backstories and the connections and the, the stuff he goes through, I think Anson Mount could really plumb the depths of the complexity of that character emotionally to bring it out in a great way, whether it be a Netflix series or a MCU film, it'd be fantastic to see Moon Knight. With Spider-Woman, I always go towards Emily Blunt. That's my default. Uh, I love her to pieces and kind of on the side if you want to go younger, I mean, people might give me shit for this, but I love Alessandra Daddario. I, oh, I have enjoyed her, her oh, in everything her. she's been in, even in something like yeah. Baywatch, which was not a good movie. She is believable. I have never not found Daddario believer, believable from like True Detective to uh, to a Baywatch. To, and no, even that terrible film she did with um, Kate Upton, she was good in it. The film is horrible, but she was good in it. So I think she'd be a great spider woman if you're going to skew young yeah. and have that universe open up that way and for Submariner I go Brian T who I love is a strong uh, strong you know faced and strong looking Asian actor and Pedro Pascal if you wanted to maybe oh my gosh, dance around so I gotta, gotta give some props both, to the Latino I know, I know that you love him yeah, I do Period. I, I had somebody kind of random for Spider-Woman okay Jodie Comer have oh, you seen Killing Eve yes Jodie would be great my gosh I would love That's a great to choice. see her do because so, I mean, she can play anything. Yeah. And she is stunning, but she has a presence. Mm -hmm. I all, also had Alexandra Daddario. Mm. And I, I know I'm going to bu butcher her name, but Anna de Ar Armas? Oh, de Ar yeah, Diarmas. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think she would be another great choice. She's another sort of mm -hmm. up and comer that I think would love to see more of. I so thought you were going Rami Malik. No, no. Look, I, I love Rami to pieces, and I think that what he did in Bohemian Rhapsody was incredible. Obviously, they gave him the Oscar for it, and of course, Mr. Robot too. But I, they wanted someone unknown, and you or someone like not yet quite there. And right. since Rami's already won an Oscar, he's there. Where so. would you put Rami in the MCU? Because I think he could do a lot of different things. I would love. I think if they're going to sign anybody up, mm -hmm. he should be their number one. He should. He would have been yeah. a great Ant Man. I would have loved to have seen yeah. him as Ant-Man. You Ant can't Man. say that now. No, I know, you can't say that now. But I, I don't know where I'd put him, but certainly somewhere in charge of a group of people. I hadn't had a chance to think about it, but it would be interesting to see his energy amongst the new, whatever we're gonna have after Endgame, yeah. amongst that new crew of Avengers, what energy he would bring to it. I don't know right. if he's, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, you already have Chadwick Boseman, you already right. have Brie Larson and whoever's gonna, and maybe Hemsworth, who are gonna lead into this new Avengers and Black Widow as well, I think. So you got to ask yourself, where would Rami fit in all those strong personalities? Yeah. Would he want to be part of it? I wonder. I, I think he would. Yeah? I feel like he's that guy. I feel like he's he's so, I think he's amenable. I mean, the fact that mm. he's doing a Bond film kind of tells True, me as the he's villain. willing to go like a little more mainstream. He could go DC yeah. and be Submariner. Yeah, no, he That's could. possible. Yeah. He's got certainly the look and everything like yeah. that to play it. So, yeah. yeah. Now, had it not been for Shazam, what about him for Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> oh, who, Zachary Levi? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Zachary yeah. Levi would have That would have been my number one. Yeah, choice. absolutely. Yeah. I agree. He's so good. I yeah. can't wait to see Shazam. I, I want him to just him. be in every, in every <laughs> film. Just cast him in everything. DC, totally. Marvel, whatever. He's got great energy. Very nice. What do we got next? What's our fourth question? Our fourth question. Sorry. <laughs> Is it coming up? There you go. Here we go. Okay. Clearly my first time. Okay. <laughs> um, at Rhino's Pappy, I want to know if he has our pet rhino. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> he says, hey, Here's my question. What classic movie that is supposed to be fantastic do you dislike and why? The Graduate was on TCM recently and I hated it. All those <laughs> long camera shots and Dustin Hoffman annoyed me. Hashtag horsemen. Yeah, there you go. Horsemen! <laughs> right, right. Respect, Rhinos. Um, I get your hatred of The Graduate. I would understand that. It's kind of a film of its time, so if you're not of a certain age, maybe you don't get it, but it does speak to this idea of the aimlessness of youth coming out of college, where are you supposed to go? And I think that's happening even more so nowadays. Where do I fit? Jobs are shrinking. Where do I go that can give me some security? This whole That whole film was about exploring where he belongs. And then by the end, you wonder if what he did 
even was worth anything because that long shot of him and Catherine Ross in the back going, okay, we did this. And then, oh crap, what do we do now? There's something you very so powerful in that the message. The first time I saw that movie, and it mm -hmm. was so long ago, I didn't even, when I watched that scene, I took that moment, and I've seen it so many times since, yeah. because by the way, Rhino's Pappy, we cannot be friends, because it is in one of my top 10 movies of You're all lost, time. You're lost, Rhino, sorry, she's a great friend. <laughs> it is one of my favorite all-time movies, for all the reasons you said you hated it, which is great, which is why we love to argue about film. True. But it, I loved the shot make. I loved the mm -hmm. way he did those shots. And I loved, uh, I love, I mean, yeah. Hoffman's performance. I just love that deadpan and the Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing to me is just pure magic. <laughs> but well, when the first time I saw that film, the ending, it didn't strike me as regret or doubt or oh. what are we doing? It kind of struck me more as <sighs> ah. now we're just breathing and yeah. now okay, we're just, and then I saw it again and I saw complete doubt and then I saw it again and I saw a mix of the two and mm. then I saw it again and I saw her jumping off the bus at the next stop. Like it's just, every time you want, and that's the brilliance oh, of I it. I hadn't even thought of her jumping off the bus at the next and stop. And just going, that's away. great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, this was fun for a second, yeah, right. but I think I'm gonna go back to Wait, the Wait, I'm gonna lose the, all this money. Yeah, ah, no, no, the no. money. <laughs> yeah. All right, the next, uh, the, the two that I would throw in there to answer the question is Gone with the Wind. I absolutely hate Gone with the Wind. I cannot stand it, it's so oh. boring. I love Clark Gable, but Vi the Vivian Lee stuff just drives me insane. And at the end, the love of her life walks away and says, I don't give a damn. She cries for 30 seconds, walks up the stairs and goes, <laughs> tomorrow is another day. That's not Good how it for works. Her. That's not how it works. You <laughs> yes, to, it does. You have to get over people. You have to process the laws and then you can move on. But she you cannot just move badass. on. It's ridiculous. I was like, no, oh no, gosh. it's not how it works. And the other one is Casablanca. I just, I don't oh, like I Casablanca because I don't like the fact that Humphrey Bogart is played for a fool by Ingrid Bergman's character. And then she gets upset at him when she comes back to Casablanca and he's there and she's with her husband who she had thought had died. And he went off, she went off and had this uh, love affair with Humphrey Bogart, then left him in the rain in Paris alone. And then she's upset that he's still upset about it because he never got closure. I'm mad about that. I So that makes that makes me not like the film as I'm much as other I'm seeing a pattern here, Roka. <laughs> Females, <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> You know, I'm just saying, don't use us up is what I'm saying. No, no. Okay, I can tell you, yeah. and I think I might have said this before in another Collider show, oh, okay. but movie I hate more than any movie, and I don't use the word hate often, no, you but don't. I hate A Clockwork Orange. Oh, wow. I despise okay. that movie on a level, and I think it's pretty obvious. I, I'm not a huge... I don't love violent films and I okay. don't love, I like, I can, I can like dark, but it, it this is dark to a level mm -hmm. that I just, and I think part of the reason why I had such an aversion to it is I saw it when I was really young and probably too young to have seen it. Okay. And someone like, I think a babysitter or something had it on and I watched it and I think I was, you know, oh, scarred how by could it. Not be traumatized it by was a film. little bit traumatizing. So yeah. I think for that reason, I don't love that one. I'm a huge Marilyn Monroe fan, but I did not like Some Like It Hot, which is the one that a lot of people love. What? I just didn't like it. I didn't like the whole drag thing. I just didn't enjoy what? it. There's other wow. films of hers that I enjoy a lot more than that one. Okay. But I don't have like, there's not really a lot of classic films that I would say I yeah. really don't like. It, well, the, the, something like it is interesting in going back in with 2019 eyes, right? Because these guys dress up in drag to escape these the criminals, right. the mob, but then they use that to like, seduce Marilyn and like right. Tony Curtis is playing two different characters to yeah. try to get in. And it's like what Tootsie did a little bit, right? Yeah. With Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Um, I would throw Barry Lyndon in there. I hate Barry Lyndon to pieces. It's one of the most boring Stanley Kubrick movies <laughs> ever. A 13, a three hour 18th century film starring Ryan O'Neill. No, thank you. At least um, I'm not the only one that picked a Stanley yeah. Kubrick film. <laughs> That's true. People, people will hate me for it. But uh, can I mention one that yeah, was like a recent one that sure. I actually didn't really care for is, um, Oh. Wolf of Wall Street. What? Yeah, I actually didn't really love that. Wow. Movie. But again, I think it was just like for as a female watching it, uh -huh. I just found it really hard to watch. Even though I okay. love the performances, Margot Robbie to me that was her best performance mm -hmm. to date. Like, oh, okay. Even more than I, Tanya, I thought she was astonishing, mm -hmm. astonishing in that. Certainly beautiful. Definitely beautiful. What an but announcement. Just, uh, yeah. of yourself as yeah. an actress. But did you, did you ever watch Pan Am? Did you ever see her? No, I never saw that show. Because she was in this TV show before she broke as a film mm -hmm. actress. And I remember seeing her and going, gosh, if I could be a manager, if I could be a manager, I would snatch that girl because that girl is going to be a star. She was, she just, 
Sean yeah. in that. But yeah, I mean, I loved I Tanya was a very different role. But yeah, I didn't I didn't okay. love last well, That's fair. I'm going to get a lot of hate for that one. <laughs> All right, let's go to our last <laughs> question here as we're running out of time. This is uh, from um, at Ben underscore Cartwright 15. They write, which actor slash actress do you see winning an Oscar in the next three to five years? For me, Margot Robbie, uh, Michael B. Jordan, and Tom Hardy. All right. You, you're always, uh, what are you trying I'm to? I'm just reading the questions. I'm, not, I'm honestly not reading your answers. Did you have your answers in there? No, yeah, I do. How come mine are pages long and yours are like three <laughs> words? Well, because I'm long-winded. That's um, all I need is one cue. I mean, agree on, agree on all of those. Yeah. Really. I think, absolutely. you know, in three to five years, you know, I'm just sort of thinking about like what Margot has down the pipeline mm -hmm. with the Barbie thing and all that. So, right. I don't, you know, and I'm thinking of Tom Hardy too. Like, what does he have coming down the pipeline? It really depends on what choices they make. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of those actors are going bigger, more mainstream films. True. And Michael B. Jordan, uh, I've known Michael B. Jordan for a long time, even before he was, you know, did Creed and all that. He mm -hmm. used to, I used to work at this other smaller outlet and he used to do all these like little sort of teeny bopper movies and oh, come wow. in a lot. And I remember him coming in and he was, you would never, never have projected his career to go the way it has. Mm. And then I remember he came in for Fruitvale Station and was like, it was a different person. Yeah. He was so laser focused. Like he used to come in and goof around and just be like, you know, what's up? And just mm -hmm. had sort of, just was just enjoying life. And then all of a sudden he just locked in. Sometimes when you lock in, that's, you know, you're just, you, you see what your career is. Yeah. People get in touch with you. They talk to you. They go, look, this is all fine. The Zac Efron film you did was fine. But like, if you want, uh, real serious success, yeah. this is the route you need to take. And you know, you can look at Denzel Washington, Denzel, even on St. Elsewhere, Denzel like, would not do certain things because he goes, a future film star wouldn't do those things. Right. So there are certain things he didn't do back then on purpose because he had a vision yeah. for his career. And maybe some people stepped out and talked to Michael B and were like, you need to do this, this, and this. And yeah, come up. and that said, and, and I'm, just gonna, mm. I'm just gonna say it, like I want him to go even deeper. Oh, well, I'm sure there will like, be opportunities. For me yeah, I want him to do something that's just, you know, he's playing these sort of iconic type mm. characters. I want to see him do something really grit, like super gritty or yeah. super against type or just want to see him do something like really different and just sort of see how much he can stretch himself. That's a good point. Yeah. What else do you see? Do you see anybody else? I mean, I think Saoirse Ronan is the mm. is an obvious choice, yeah. but she's been, I mean, that's not really picking anything obscure because she's been nominated already yeah, she more has. times at her age than any other actress. But really? I think one, uh, and T Timothy Chalamet, yeah. I think is oh, one of absolutely. those people. But um, Adam Driver is mm. one of my favorite actors. He right. is just, I think he and Timothy Chalamet have a similar energy okay. that they remind me of Leonardo DiCaprio when he started out, that they have this raw natural talent that they can just exist on screen right. and be captivating, be utterly captivating. Okay. And I think Adam Driver, if you ever saw him on Girls, yeah. he was phenomenal. He's obviously great in Black Klansman. <laughs> See, uh, go see Patterson or rent Patterson. If you haven't seen Patterson, it's on one of your streaming services. That that's a nice, quiet, incredibly solid performance from Adam Driver that you don't usually see in these yeah. other more high-profile films, and really? that shows I you his range. It, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, no, I, he's my choice, and I, I love. Okay. I just I find him really interesting. He's sort of counter counterintuitive of what a movie star is. Yeah, and yeah. That, I saw him at the Critics' Choice, and he's just. He's just that person. You don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. Right. You don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. He's just so unpredictable. And that's what I love seeing in an actor, that you don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. Yeah. Well, I, I would throw in uh, Lakeith Stanfield. I think he's been fantastic in uh, a number of projects, certainly in Sorry to Bother You, which a lot of people like were in and out by that ending. I loved it. And I love him. And in Get Out, he's fantastic. Even in that kind of uh, uh, rom-com that's coming through Netflix, I want to see what he can do with that, from, with Gina Rodriguez. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, I forget the other actresses, the other two other actresses that are in there. Um, but I want to see what he can do with that. So whenever his name is mentioned for anything, I get excited because I think he's on the path. I interviewed him at Comic-Con. He's a very serious guy. He's, a, he's an odd dude, yeah. which I kind of appreciate. Those are the ones that win. But he, yeah, so he came in and he was, um, he had like, I think he was kind of in costume. He had like kind of a net over half of his face. <laughs> And and 
I, he was in some sort of a character yeah. and I tried, you know, you always try to make small talk before you interview somebody because sure. you're just trying to break the ice and get the feel for what they're like. And he was in a character and who did not bring character to <laughs> the whole interview. It was super awkward. I'm sure I was that host that's like trying, <laughs> trying all these different angles. And he was just, but yeah, it's, always, it's like the Christian Bale type. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Sorcerer Ronan was on my list. You said that's an obvious choice. I'm sure she'll get there too. Emily Blunt is another obvious choice I have. I would throw in Tiffany Haddish. Uh, I think though, really? oh yeah, I think Tiffany, I think Tiffany is going to find the right dramatic role. Interesting. Just like kind of like, and, and I don't mean to make this comparison in a simple way, but like Whoopi did with Ghost. Like she found that role, they gave her the Oscar boom. I think as a comedian, I think Tiffany coming out as a comedian, she's already shown in Lego Movie too that she has an incredible singing voice. She's very good with like these dramatic moments or vulnerable moments in these comedies. And so I think she has, and, and her story of, you know, being homeless for so many years and living out of her car and all that kind of, like that kind of is there inside you when you finally make it yeah. and can you access that in a role that allows you to show that we'll see but I think she's one she, definitely she to watch for an Oscar. necessarily like if you look at her IMDB page she has so many films coming down the pipe yeah she does she plays these smaller you know for the most part smaller roles right yeah it would somebody would built. have to take a leap and you know yeah but yeah that's an interesting choice <laughs> you know who I'd love to see Who's I'd that? love to see Chris Evans or Robert Pattinson? Because they're both oh, actors yeah. that I think have been, could have been typecast so early on mm -hmm. and clearly want to do something more meaningful. And mm -hmm. I think Robert Pattinson's really proven himself in the last couple of films that he's done. And those are two actors that I would, I would love to see. I don't know three to five years necessarily, mm -hmm. but in the next, you know, 10, maybe 10 year <laughs> range, <laughs> I can see it. Well, I think it's possible with Pattinson, yeah. absolutely, because of what you said. I think a lot of people started considering him for Batman because of his most recent work yeah. and the directors he has worked with and what he's been able to bring out as an actor in those parts yeah. that sheds that Twilight stuff and move, like Kristen Stewart has, completely shed that Twilight stuff yeah. and move on to these more serious serious, uh, complex roles, and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. All right, well, that's all the questions from you all. Thank you so much for joining us for this lovely Saturday on Collider Mailbag. I want to thank the great Nikki Novak for stopping by. Thank you, thank Nikki. Thank you so much for having me. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Where can people find you and see all the stuff oh, you're doing? Um, at Fandango. I am a correspondent for Fandango and at Nikki Novak. There you go. Follow her. She's a great follower. She's a lot of funny things to say, and you can watch her Instagram stories when she plays with her deers at her house. <laughs> all of that, a lot of fun, and of course, she's a great interview viewer as well. Always gets the best out of those people she interviews. It's fun to watch your stuff. Thank you. Uh, you can always follow me at The Roca Says as well uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. And look, like I said, next time we put call outs for these mailbag questions, you can submit them on our social media, Instagram or Twitter. Remember that hashtag Collider Mailbag so I can find them a lot easier. Or if you don't like social media, you can email us mailbag at collider.com and I'll pour through them and pick out some of the best ones and have a great show like we had today. So thanks so much. We will see you next time. Enjoy your Saturday. Take care.